the uh, under the physics uh, syllabus, under uh, the practical system. Mm, so, according to the, the national curriculum, uh, we have uh, the actually four instruments uh, to be done at the beginning. So, uh, the first one is the body type. So, the cap is uh, comes in usually a wooden box. Right? Sometimes, uh, can be, there are some plastic housings as well. Sometimes uh, only the one caliber. So one caliber is inside. It's there. So we're going to talk about the thing later. And uh, the other one is the uh, micro micro gauge. So uh, if we can measure the diameter and uh, the probably most of the cases uh, frequently it is used for the uh, measurements of the diameter of a thin wire. Um, and uh, something like that. So the, the other one is the um, yeah that that is for the uh, spherometer. By using that, uh, we can usually usually we can measure the uh, uh, curvature of a curved surface, like uh, the the say for example uh, the uh, uh, the uh, mirror. So curvature of that uh, mirror, mirror or uh, the sphere so the uh, radius of curvature of that uh, particular sphere or the curved surface uh, usually can be found by using this uh, spherometer uh, at the same time we have uh, another instrument called the uh, traveling microscope or uh, movie microscope so we are going to talk about these instruments uh, separately in further sessions the step by step right for the time being uh, today uh, we can get some idea um, about the, uh, the most fundamental and the, uh, the main main the instruments uh, in our syllabus, the audio caliber. So, in the first of all, uh, before unboxing that, the on, on the box or so on the uh, housing is mentioned uh, 0 to 125 millimeters. So, uh, that means the range. So, basically, uh, this audio caliber can be used to measure. Let's say, for example, links, uh, the, or we can take uh, measurements from 0 to 125 millimeters, meaning uh, 0 to 12.5 centimeters. We can convert uh, millimeters uh, into centimeters divided by uh, 10, so uh, 12.5 uh, centimeters. So basically, uh, uh, this information on the color. So we can have unbox that thing. There are two metal clips. So then after that, uh, you can see. The inside, the caliper is there. It's usually a stainless steel uh, the instrument, and uh, two cushions are there to uh, the prevent any any kind of, any kind of uh, vibration, which can uh, harm this uh, instrument, right? So uh, we are the one uh, caliper, and I'm going to keep the box uh, away, right? So the that's the one caliper, as you can see. Uh, basically. Uh, the, the first part is to identify uh, the, the, the parts, the major, main parts of the body caliber. Now, uh, the, there's actually a small nut here, so that nut can be tightened, that can be uh, loosened, right? So you can turn that thing the, uh, so, so easily. So once you do so, the, it allows you to move one you can, as you can see, uh, the one arm, one portion can be moved with respect to the other. So, uh, the, so these actually are jaws. They are called jaws, as well as these. So these uh, parts, arms or jaws, are used to measure the external diameter of a given uh, object. For example, let's say uh, we want to measure the vessel. Solid uh, cylinder here, wooden cylinder. So, in case we want to measure the uh, external diameter, external diameter here. So, we can use these uh, like uh, two jaws here, these two jaws, like this. So, uh, I'll better like uh, I'll give you a closer look. It's just uh, the we can take that uh, enough space and uh, keep it there. And now we can, I mean, we can move that arm the slowly until uh, we feel both the jaws are in contact uh, with the surface of the particular solid, the cylinder. 
Right. So now, uh, uh, that's, that's the basic, basic idea is that. So uh, it seems to be get the external measurements because the external diameter, right? So uh, therefore these jaws are called external jaws. At the same time, these jaws are called internal jaws. The reason is uh, because uh, we can use uh, the this to measure internal diameters. Now, for example, let's say uh, there's a bottle and the brim is there, the mouth of the bottle. So I'm going to measure that uh, not the external diameter, external, not the external diameter, but the internal diameter, internal one. So in, in that case, I can't use that. I can't use these external jaws. These external jaws cannot be used in that case, right? So, uh, so to get that thing done, these are the jaws uh, we should be used with, the internal jaws. So we have to uh, hold that thing like that and move internal jaws uh, until the uh, jaws are in contact, until we feel jaws are just in contact with the uh, uh, internal surfaces of the uh, the the brim, and then we can uh, get the uh, just we can tighten that thing that uh, uh, small nut called lock nut, uh, which prevents uh, the accident movements or unexpected movements of the uh, jaws, and then we can take it out and then like uh, we can get the uh, the corresponding diameter right like that. We can get the reading. So uh, basically that's the idea, and uh, so now, now you have you have some 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 idea about the, the particular bony caliber, what it is like. So by using these uh, external jaws, we can measure the uh, the what's called these external diameters and uh, external measurements. Actually, not only the diameters, uh, probably sometimes the lengths. For example, let's say uh, there's a cube like this. Uh, I want to measure the that side. So we can use the body character like this, there, right? and uh, we can get the pre. So not only diameters, uh, even for the uh, even for the linear measurements, it can be used. With. Right. Uh, let's talk about that thing a bit later in detail. So basically now with that understanding, these two are called external jaws, um, which can be used uh, can be used for external measurements. And uh, these two jaws are called internal jaws, which are used to take uh, internal measurements, like internal diameter, uh, likewise. And uh, there's a there's a one portion. This 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 portion right, is fixed. It is not movable. But the other one, the other jaw, can be moved in and out. So that's called the sliding part. So there's a fixed scale here. On the bottom, it's called the, the fixed scale. You can see that if I uh, take it uh, closer, so you can see that uh, there's a there's a scale here, right? Fine. So that's called the external, uh, the uh, actually uh, the fixed scale or the main scale, right? Uh, at the same time, the if you take this uh, sliding portion, uh, so the sliding bar, the sliding the um, the sliding portion is also calibrated so I'll, 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 uh, the, I'll give you I'll give the chance uh, for you to take a closer look you can see uh, this moving jaw is also calibrated you can see some small small uh, divisions are there calibrations are there right so now uh, therefore there are two main scales actually uh, two, two, two scales are there main major scales are there number one is called the main scale which is uh, on the uh, the fixed jaw, the fixed arm, and uh, the other one is uh, calibrated, uh, the other one is uh, located or oh, deduated on the moving scale. Right. So, this main scale is usually uh, by millimeters, millimeters division, one millimeter divisions, and uh, this sliding scale is by uh, actually a uh, uh, According to a principle called the Vernier principle. So, Pierre Vernier was a scientist uh, who designed that particular scale. So, therefore, uh, the name for this uh, caliber, Vernier caliber. And uh, probably you noticed that while taking this uh, sliding jaw here and there, uh, there's a rod here coming out and it's fixed uh, to this particular two jaws, internal jaw and the uh, external jaw, internally. 
to the body, it's that way. It's running through the body. And so it's getting connected. So when you move, when you try to move this uh, studying though, this particular body is also going to follow the same motion. Actually, the purpose of that uh, uh, bar, the particular bar is called the, the depth bar or depth gate or probably sometimes a depth rod or sometimes people say uh, a stud. Uh, the frequently used name is uh, the depth bar. So they say uh, it's uh, the depth bar. It is used to measure the depth. For example, uh, just, just to uh, give you an illustration, let's say for example, we want to measure the depth of that particular the uh, bottle, plastic bottle. So I'm going to hold um, that uh, portion, this, this portion, right there on the brim, and uh, going to move the slide portion until it is going to touch the bottom of the particular, the bottle. Right. So let's say it's, there's a small crater, or uh, there's a small hole, or probably uh, uh, the uh, there's a small bottle like this, uh, whose depth uh, should be measured. So successfully, once you get that thing done, once you feel uh, the depth bar is in contact with the bottle, you can take it out and get the uh, particular reading here. So that particular reading is going to give you the uh, the, the depth of that particular bottle. And uh, at the same time, uh, there's a small screw here, which is fixed. So by which we can I mean, move this uh, sliding one. So usually the best practice is to hold your hand here. Keep your hand uh, on the uh, main, main, I mean, uh, the, the fixed, the uh, part of the body. And uh, hold your thumb over there. Just, just place your thumb over there. And then you can remove that thing, either in or out, until you want to place that thing out, or until you want to take your toes to the correct position. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's another screw here. Small screw is there, right? So that screw is called the lock nut. Why is it called lock nut? Now, once you get a particular division, uh, before you are going to take that, uh, before you are going to take the whirling clipper out of uh, that particular place. Right, probably let's say uh, the 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 last cylinder. This is going to be like that. Now, why? Uh, in, in case this lock nut is not there, right? So what's going to happen? When I'm going to take that thing out of out of the cylinder, probably there can be accidental accident, accidental movements or uh, inadvertent movements or just unexpected movements can be there of yours. Probably. Uh, is like that uh, or this way, some kind of like uh, because you misalignments that can be uh, unwanted moments, so which make some clearances or some gaps. So, therefore, uh, what you're going to read is, uh, is not going to be uh, accurate. So, therefore, what you can do is just uh, when you feel your sign in contact with the surface, just try to uh, tighten that thing a bit, not too much. Do not apply any undue pressure. Just apply a bit of pressure until it, it, uh, it, that you, you feel it is uh, tight. Now, the purpose of that uh, lock nut is to hold that uh, sliding scale in place without uh, allowing it to move here and there. Now it's uh, okay, so uh, we are pretty sure it's not going to move. So, what we can do uh, carefully, we can take it out and we are pretty sure about the, uh, the measurement what because uh, that lock nut is making sure. The, the sliding scales are not going to move uh, as because uh, the lock nut is going to call that uh, sliding scale may fix it or with respect to the fixed part of the uh, body. Okay. Right, that's, how, uh, that's the uh, basic introduction uh, uh, regarding the uh, body caliber. One more time, uh, if you are going to just uh, summarize, basically that's called the uh, body caliber, which can be used to uh, uh, measure the external diameters, external measurements and uh, internal measurements like internal diameters uh, or it's just I mean uh, by moving that by using the depth bar or the depth rod or the depth stud the depth of a crater or a pretty small bottle or pretty small uh, let's say uh, the hollow ring uh, so that depth bar can be used. At the same time uh, there's a special scale here uh, on the moving scale on the moving uh, the bar called sliding scale and uh, that's basically called the Volia scale. So actually that is that Volia scale is the one which is special in this case. 
and uh, there's a principle, uh, the volume behind this particular chemical called the volume principle. So uh, basically, that's how uh, volume chemical works. So it's perfect for uh, objects like uh, uh, the like solid uh, cylinders to measure its uh, its own diameter, to measure probably its, uh, the probably like that, uh, to measure its uh, height, uh, the uh, the its own diameter, right? And uh, really, really uh, good for uh, solid uh, the parallel pipe. Just like that, uh, so you can measure the fine and like uh, the height or in this like way, in that way, okay, anything like that. So uh, at the same time, uh, the, if you have a, a solid bowl like that, a pretty solid one, so what you can do is just uh, you can uh, hold that against the external dose until you feel uh, okay, this a little. Uh, the dose in the type of the surface of the sphere line. Right. So meaning uh, the diameter of the pole is also can be uh, measured. So but usually you know, every time we take uh, one one particular reading in a case like this, it's highly recommended because uh, physics is something which is based on experimental uh, observations and uh, uh, the experimental uh, data. So uh, it's something really really important. So therefore, uh, we usually take uh, several uh, several measurements uh, that way, this way, and uh, probably by turning that uh, the sphere to by giving it a different orientation, we can take uh, several measurements and get the average. That's the uh, best uh, way of uh, getting the diameter of uh, such a ball. Uh, usually, uh, taking several measurements and getting the average is the most uh, most recommended method of uh, calculating the uh, whatever that uh, measurement. Can be a length, can be a probably a diameter, like this. Anyway, so uh, that's how the volume can works. So uh, in the next video, I'm going to meet you uh, with the volume principle, uh, which is basically uh, based on the fact that we take the main scale, we take uh, the main scale here. You can see the main scale. Some portions of main scale, some 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 portions, some divisions of the main scale will be taken. For example, you say 49. Uh, 49 divisions. So now I told you it is calibrated. Main scale is calibrated by uh, one millimeter divisions. So therefore, 49 divisions. For example, 49 divisions means 49 millimeters. Why? Right. Because one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter, like uh, 49 uh, the portions, uh, segments, sections. So therefore, 49 millimeters will be taken and uh, will be subdivided into. Uh, equal 50 divisions. That equal 50 divisions, the subdivision portion, the equal 50 divisions is done on this uh, on this vernier scale. Uh, in this particular case, uh, in this particular particular uh, vernier scale, I'm holding in my hands. The it is like uh, like a one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, like uh, like calibrated. One means uh, actually uh, five divisions are there. Two means ten divisions are there. Three means fifteen, and uh, five means uh, twenty-five, and uh, eight means forty. Nine means uh, forty-five. So again, ultimately the ten means is going to be fifty. So therefore, uh, what has happened here? Uh, the uh, the, uh, the according to Vernier principle, uh, forty-nine main scale divisions. Forty-nine main scale divisions. Very important. Forty-nine main scale divisions. Has been equally subdivided into 50 equal divisions in the Vernier scale. So we have in the Vernier scale we have equal 50 divisions, which is exactly equal in length to 49 divisions of the main scale, which is 49 millimeters. That's what this principle uh, is built. So uh, basically, that's the idea. Keep that thing in your mind and. Uh, in case you got something, you absorb something from this particular video, just uh, subscribe and then like uh, the uh, just feel free to have your comments and uh, upload any questions in case you have. So I'll take some time uh, to answer your questions. Uh, and uh, in the next video, I'm uh, anticipating to explain the real principle, real working uh, behind the body calibre and uh, how to get the measurements of the body calibre. Till then, uh, okay, good luck.